was persecuted. It was an annual meeting. And I had 33 cents, my name. Just got saved 18 years old before I told my age. And <laughs> I had 33 cents. I went over to the candy counter. Young man back there pouring pickle juice to the side of the brown paper bag with 10 chips. And on the side of the bug that and butternut. I can't even find butternuts anymore. And I, I knew that 33 cents was going to get that. He was back in 1972. It was 40 cents. I was 7 cents short. And you know what he said to me? I got you back. <laughs> and after that, I, 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 told, I met him the next month at the council. Singing and directing the choir. And I said, I want to be just like him. Young, energetic, and inspiring. You, you watch people. That's why we go from different churches. You can't get everything like this here. That's why I encourage you to come to Old Fellowship. You learn things. You meet new people. And you become partners and friends. Prayer partners. This is my prayer partner. I was one of our services back in our former church. The speaker forgot that he was, he was supposed to preach for us that night. And uh, he was at a retreat. And he forgot it. And so, I looked around and, I, and we had all these brothers were there that Friday night. And uh, I looked over to Elder King and I said, Elder King, I said, Pastor, would you uh, bring the word for us tonight? And his text was the same thing he said to me. I'm in. I'm in. And he's been preaching for us every Friday night. Every Friday night except for one when he had a double book and he asked me to excuse. But he has preached every Friday night for Grace and Glory, ministry of Grace and Glory Apostolic Church. And I thank and praise God for his wife, Sister Stephanie. I thank and praise him for a double chance ministry after uh, assembling this wonderful church on the west side, which is the best side. Amen. When you stand and receive our speaker for the night, as we give him the pulpit and the service and the church and the Lord lead him and direct and guide him, this to go to David K. Another champion for the council chairman. And no one is the Oh, come on, give the praise this week. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. He's high and lifted up. He's worthy to be. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your word on tonight, oh God. Bless us, oh God. Put your thoughts in our mind, your words in our mouth. Help us to speak with clarity your word. That your people may be edified on tonight. And you may be glorified. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Yes. We thank God for being here. Amen. One more time in Zion. Amen. Amen. Zion. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Pastor Boone. The Lord is truly blessed him. He's a uh, very good, long time friend of mine. And I don't know if I'm getting over with some of the stories. I've been saying. <laughs> To get it in my mind, so, okay, yeah, I remember that. But I thank God that uh, just for years and years and just uh, going around to the various churches, how we uh, fellowship together and uh, we just grew up together in the Lord. We thank God for the ministry here in Zion. That first lady room, we thank God for that how we're working together. Amen. Thank God all of our pastors that are here. Amen. Love you all. Amen. Love you all. Amen. Amen. Our chairman, he's still my chairman. So that's basically he's still my chairman. Learned so much from uh, Dr. Reed until uh, I can take about 15 minutes and I still wouldn't be able to really get it out you know, because I only have a few more minutes after that to bring the message. So I want to use my time wisely. But Dr. Reed is talking so much. I'm just working under him. Amen. And I thank him for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. All the way from Decatur. It's all right, Pastor. We love you, man. Thank God for you. Amen. Decatur, Illinois, and how oh, he's doing a wonderful job. Uh, even down there, we thank God all the first ladies. Sister Kay says I love Pastor, and then she says I love you. Been working so diligently, uh, you know, this week uh, concerning uh, the wedding and the is getting married. Yes. And I thought that the bride's family was supposed to, uh, to <laughs> you know, Amen. Amen. 
And it's a different day now. Amen. And, uh, uh, the room steps in and does a lot of things. So we've been going. I've been up, uh, I think, since about 4 this morning. And just going about doing some things. And normally I'm in bed about now. But uh, when I step behind the sacred desk, uh, I don't know, something just kicks in. I just feel strength that comes from the Lord. Amen. I know some people understand what I'm talking about. Amen. And so uh, just pray with me uh, tonight. I won't be before you for a long time. Amen. But there's a scripture uh, in the book of Galatians, chapter 3, uh, verse uh, 1 through 3, that we want to speak on tonight. Amen. And thank you for the invitation, uh, Pastor Brian. Be with you. Uh, be with you anyway. Amen. And you know, you stay around uh, El Broomfield so long until they start calling you Broomfield. That's right. Brother <laughs> Broomfield. <laughs> I think some still call you from Philly. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. But Watkins, Sister Watkins, thank you for coming. Please Amen. forgive us. Uh, on, 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 forgive us, please, the, the, the media the choir members. Uh, in a way. Uh, yeah, they, they started Amen. doing things and then uh, uh, couldn't, there's no bus driver and everybody's just working, working, working. So I said, okay, y'all going to hear this on Sunday. Uh, I asked talk about you on Sunday. Uh, uh, you know this. All right. Chapter 3 and, and verse 1, 2, and 3. Very familiar passage of scripture. I'm going to get my glasses out now. O oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This is only what I learned of you. Receive you the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? And what I'd like to mention on tonight, and the, the subject the Lord has given me to speak to people is keep trusting Jesus. Yes. Just that. Just keep trusting Jesus. Look at somebody and just tell them, keep trusting Jesus. Keep trusting Jesus. Keep trusting Jesus. Trust Jesus. Of course, I'm not calling anybody foolish tonight, and I'm just reading the scripture. But of course, anybody that would not trust Jesus is okay. Um, so even the fool is said in his heart, there is no God. Uh, in the whole Bible, I believe, uh, there's no more passionate or comprehensive yet concise statement of the truth of the gospel other than Galatians when I read the scriptures. And Galatians helps us to understand and it tells us that salvation is through faith in Jesus Christ alone. No works can earn salvation. Amen. Now, in general, as we grew up, uh, of course, my father taught me in the workforce, and, and we worked for everything. And I, worked, I began working when I was about 10 years old uh, in the grocery business, and uh, full-time, full-time. And we had to work. I remember times when I tried to stay back because That's I right. wanted to watch cartoons. And he called up and said, get down here. Couldn't no cartoons, nothing, work, work, work. And, and it sort of gave a sense of uh, ownership of what you have accomplished. And, and, and in general, I'm finding out that a lot of people uh, want to earn salvation by works that can be uh, easily identified. Uh, they try to do that, earn salvation. Uh, so it gives them a great sense of, of ownership, you might say. However, in this letter, Paul reveals the arrogance of such thinking, and, and he helps the church to realize that we can stand justified before God only through faith in Christ Jesus. Nothing else will save us. Can I take a few minutes to talk about this? I'm getting stirred up. Uh, he, yes, he had purpose in writing to the church. Paul had purpose in writing. He, he had led the Galatians uh, to Christ, the Galatians to Christ, and, and spiritually they was doing well. They made a good start in their walk with God. They just simply believed Jesus. They believed Jesus. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. However, apparently Paul uh, also became aware of a perversion of the gospel of grace that actively uh, infected the Galatians church. False teachers who had come uh, to Galatians since Paul's ministry were advocating salvation not only uh, through faith but also through the works of the law. Now, specifically, they placed emphasis on the Jewish rite of circumcision. And, and not only that, uh, they attacked the apostleship of Paul, trying to show that he was the false leader uh, that, that, that was giving a false message. You know, and they wanted to uh, attach on to faith in Jesus, works of the law. Now, I came up in the church uh, all my life, basically, and, and, and you know, I've heard a lot of things from many different organizations, many different preachers, 
And, and, and primarily when I came up, uh, I always heard that, yes, you must believe and stop doing this. Oh my God, I don't think I would be in trouble tonight. Amen. Believe and stop doing this. Believe and stop this. Believe and stop that. Uh, and there was a sort of a, a hint of works in that, 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 that will say, if you believe and stop doing this, then you shall be saved. Uh, but what my scripture tells me in the book of Romans is that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, thou shall be saved. Yes. Now, here it is. Anyone that believes, they will do certain things. Amen. Exactly Amen. Hallelujah. They will do. There are works that follow what you say you believe. Amen. Right. Uh, so uh, we, we understand that Christians uh, do not just confess that I'm saved and then start doing anything and everything that they want to do, but Amen. They believe, and then as they begin to watch uh, the life of Christ, begin to read their scripture, amen, uh, they begin to change. They begin to change. Uh, amen. I believe this is the message that Paul was basically giving them. Amen. And it's not by works. You must believe and trust Jesus Christ. He says, maintain your spiritual freedom. Amen. He, he looks in uh, the, 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 the third verse of the book of Galatians, and he says, uh, what are you thinking? I'm paraphrasing. He says, what are you thinking? Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? In other words, uh, amen, God saved you. Hallelujah. You, you believe on the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And he was drawn by God. And, and you said, yes, Lord. Amen. And you begun in the spirit. Now do you think that you could switch it over to the flesh and begin to perfect yourself by the works of the flesh? Or, or believing in your own mind, believing in your own will, believing in uh, your own abilities. Amen. I don't know how you feel about it. Amen. But I trust Jesus. So, Paul seeks to expose the error of these Judaizers. So, because not only did they bring a false message, but they also had impure motives. So his letter to the Galatians was a swift and decisive attempt to counter this message, which was a different gospel. Paul didn't write out of anger, understand, he wrote out of love. He saw the Galatians leaving the correct path and, and their addition to the gospel message. He, he, he loved his fellow believers too much to allow them to go astray. Paul loved them. I believe his ultimate goal in writing was to prevent the readers of this letter from embracing a false gospel and to encourage them to retain, even hold on to your spiritual freedom in Christ Jesus. I believe Paul has a mind of God, amen, in not wanting his children to be tied up with abolished rules and regulations that causes a person to feel good about themselves because of what they do or what they don't do. You know, some people, you know, they, they feel good about themselves because of what they did in the church. Oh, I heard a lot of testimonies, and, and you know, they feel good about themselves because of what they don't do. I stopped doing this. I stopped doing that. Child, amen, I didn't stop doing things to be saved. Oh, I, I stopped doing something because I am. Thank you, Jesus. Because I am saved. You know, many times people, oh, can okay, stop this? Uh, believe and stop smoking. Amen. But there's people in the world that stop smoking. Yes, yes. My God. Don't have a bit of Holy Ghost in them, but they stop smoking. They stop drinking. They stop all that, but they're still not saved. How, if you believe and trust Jesus Christ, I know that he will make a change and make a difference in your life. Somebody give God some praise here. Yeah. I'm almost through, but I just want you to understand. He expresses the mind of God. I don't want you to be uh, tied up with abolished rules, abolished uh, regulations. Amen. They had to do this, do that. Uh, Amen. It causes you to feel good about yourself. Uh, you ought to feel good about yourself because of who you are in God. Uh, oh my God. Uh, you ought to feel good about yourself because of what God is doing in your life right now. Uh, oh my God. I'm not what I, uh, I'm going to be. Uh, because uh, amen, I am a son of God now, but it does not yet appear what I shall be. Uh, but I know when he shall appear, I shall be like him, uh, for I shall see him as he is. Uh, until that day, God is working on me. Uh, uh, there's not anybody in this room tonight that is made yet. Uh, nobody is perfect, uh, but God is yet working on us. Uh, here the scripture said, it is God that worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. If it was not for the mercies of God, we would have all been consumed a long time ago. But thanks be unto God, because his mercy tell it not. Morning by morning, I 
I've seen new mercies. I, when I laid down last night, I had mercy. When I woke up this morning, I had some new mercy because of mercy for yesterday, I needed it then. I, when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to need some more mercy. Somebody shout mercy. Oh, my God. I, I don't know how you feel uh, about it, but I refuse. This is just Pastor K. Uh, Thank you for calling me, Pastor. I, I refuse to allow somebody to tell me uh, that doing a certain thing will keep me saved. Uh, uh, it's not about works. Amen. I want to tell you, uh, the same God that saved me uh, is the same God that's keeping me. Uh, uh, and if he can't keep me, uh, then I will be lost. Uh, why? Because I could not save myself, uh, and I cannot keep myself. Uh, but thanks be unto God, uh, He's powerful enough. Uh, and unto Him that's able to keep you from falling uh, and present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. Somebody give your Savior some great praise right now. spiritual freedom. Walk in this spiritual freedom. Maintain this spiritual freedom. Walk worthy of the vocation that you have been called to. When I read the book of Galatians, uh, there is a one a repeated phrase, and I believe it summarizes the subject of Galatians, and that phrase would be this. The truth of the gospel. The truth of the gospel. Now when we read Romans, Romans presents the gospel as an answer to a universal human sinfulness. But Galatians clarifies the gospel message against the subtle, uh, uh, ever deadly and dangerous notion of salvation by works. As I read my Bible, I cannot see anywhere in the scripture where any sinful person has ever been granted eternal life based on their works. Oh my, as a matter of fact, even in Galatians chapter 3 and 10, everyone who lives by such a confidence in works is cursed because no one can perfectly obey the law. We must understand that the law came to point out sin. It came to show us what was sin. And Paul said when the law came, I died. Oh my God. The law could not keep us from obeying. He could not keep us to obey, but it pointed out. But thanks be unto God through his mercy, through his grace, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Jesus Christ. So now that I have received the life of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, now I am able to do, I am able to keep the whole law. Why? Because the life of Christ is living in me. Oh, please understand, saints, when God looks at us as his children, he does not look at us in our sinful state because we have traded places with Jesus. We have become the righteousness of God. When Jesus hung on the cross, he took on our sins and he gave us his righteousness. So when God looked at Jesus on the cross, he looked at our sins. But when he looks at us now, he looks at his righteousness. Oh my God, thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we must understand that we cannot perfectly obey the law and anyone who tries to add works, rituals, or law to the message of what it takes to be a Christian, they do not present the truth of the gospel. I believe in this day and time that we must safeguard the truth. As a matter of fact, amen, we need the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And the truth of the matter is this. The only way a person can be justified before God is by faith in Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Paul emphasizes this point over and over. Faith in Christ. Faith in Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. Faith in Christ. Faith in Christ is the proper response to the gospel. Faith in Christ. Why? Because if you have faith in Christ, you will be transformed into what you believe. Did y'all get that? 
if you have faith in Christ. Now, what are you going to believe? You're going to transform it into that. Why? Because it starts with your thinking. Now, you begin to think it. Amen. Thinking transfers to your will. Huh? And whatever you will, that is what you do. Huh? So when you have faith in Christ, you're thinking him. I meditate his life day and night. Huh? And because his life is lived through me, huh? I do what he does. Huh? And when I do what Jesus does, that's when I prosper. Remember the Psalms? Uh, whatsoever you do shall prosper. Uh, why? Because I'm seeking to do it just like Jesus.